Hey guys, it's Courtney from the Ivy League and today I'm going to give you some tips on pediatric cardiac defects that really helped me out and so hopefully they will help you. Um, so there are four basic types of pediatric cardiac defects. When I look at them, the first one is a decrease uh, is a defect that causes a decrease in pulmonary blood flow, which is a right to left shunt. And generally, the signs and symptoms of a right to left shunt are cyanosis, poor weight gain, pulmonary congestion, and congestive heart failure with increased shunting. So, under that, if we look at the individual uh, defects, one of those is pulmonary atresia, where the tricuspid valve is absent. And if you look at specific signs and symptoms, you see cyanosis, tachypnea, uh, CHF, pulmonary edema, hepatomegaly, acidosis, hypoxic episodes, clubbing, polycythemia, growth delays, and they will have a continuous murmur. This uh, is best diagnosed with an x-ray, ECG, and a transthoracic echo. The treatment for pulmonary atresia is uh, use of prostaglandin E to keep any, um, any fetal circula circulatory um, shunts open like a uh, PFO and a PDA to allow um, blood flow to get through. Also digoxin, diuretics, um, and as far as surgical treatments, they can do a balloon atrial septoplasty, the Restelia procedure, or a modified Fontan procedure. So similar to the last one is tricuspid atresia, and that's where the tricuspid valve is absent. So the symptoms are pretty much the same, and the diagnosis is pretty much the same, and so is the treatment. Uh, TOF is also called Tetralogy of Fallot, and it's four defects kind of in one, and they're pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, a VSD, an overriding aorta, and you could possibly have a fifth one, which would be a PFO. So the signs and symptoms are a little bit different. Um, you have a systolic murmur with this one instead of a continuous. You also have hypoxia, cyanosis, polycythemia. Um, there's a chance of metabolic acidosis with this one. Poor growth, clubbing, exercise, intolerance, and tet spells. So the diagnosis for this one is x-ray, ECG, echo, cath, and an H&H. &H. And the treatment is to manage the tet spells. Um, you can bring the knees to the chest, administer morphine, and that kind of stuff. Um, you want to mo monitor the metabolic acidosis, and you want to treat them um, with endocarditis prophylaxis and surgical procedures. They can do total corrective surgery, and they can do a Blalock tacit shunt. So the last one is the pulmonic stenosis, and it's a narrowing of the valve, valve area, or the great artery. It could be a defect in any area. So signs and symptoms vary, and they can be from mild, which would be asymptomatic, moderate, which would just be dyspnea, fatigue, um, congestive heart failure, hepatosplenomegaly, and chest pain. Um, there's also a loud systolic murmur. Diagnosis with this one is made by x-ray, ECG, echo, and cath. And the treatment is a balloon valvuloplasty, surgical valvotomy, and surgical resection if it's in the vessel itself. So that is decreased pulmonary blood flow, the right to left shunt. The next defect it causes increased pulmonary blood flow, which is a left to right shunt. And by left, by, by these directional shunts, I mean that the blood flow flows from one area of the heart to the other. 
and I should have explained that before, sorry. The, um, so the blood flow goes from the left to, to the right. So with this one, generally the signs and symptoms are going to be tachypnea, tachycardia, a murmur, CHF, poor weight gain, diaphoresis, periorbital edema, and frequent respiratory infections. So let's look at the first one. It's a VSD, ventricular septal defect. It's an opening in the ventricular septum. Um, and symptoms range, uh, moderate to large, can cause CHF. Diagnosis is made with an x-ray, echo, cath, or ECG. And treatment is usually conservative. Um, most of the time it'll close on its own, so spontaneous closure. They can also do pulmonary artery banding or place a surgical patch over it. The next one is an atrial septal defect, which is an opening in the septum between the atrium. Atria, sorry. And the signs and symptoms, there usually are none, but uh, you can see congestive heart failure with large defects. The diagnosis is made with a heart echo for this one. And the treatment is spontaneous closure all on its own, or um, surgical, or using a patch to close it up. The next one is a PDA, patent ductus arteriosus, and it's a shunt from the aorta to the pulmonary arteries. And this is one of those fetal circulation defects that are needed in the womb to keep the baby oxygenated. So signs and symptoms of this one include tachypnea, tachycardia, full and bounding pulse, widened pulse pressure, hypotension, pneumonia, and frequent respiratory infections. These are very unique um, to this particular defect. Also, um, it's said to have a machinery murmur, which sounds a lot like the chain on a bicycle um, grinding. Treatment with um, treatment for PDA is endomethacin or ibuprofen, which causes it to close. And they just watch it, more like a wakeful watching. It may close on its own, or they can ligate it if they need to. And then the next one is an AV canal. And it's a defect of the atrial and ventricular septum and the mitral and tricuspid valves. Um, signs and symptoms depend on the amount of shunting. And there is a murmur with this one. Diagnosis is made with x-ray, ECG, echo, and cath. And it's seen um, fairly often in Down syndrome. And treatment for this is usually surgical. And it includes pulmonary artery banding and the Glenn and Fontan procedures. So those are the left to right shunts. The next one is a mixed blood flow, which means you kind of get um, both increase and decrease uh, in different areas. So symptoms um, are cyanosis, poor weight gain, pulmonary congestion, congestive heart failure, failure may occur with increased shunting. And the first example is truncus arteriosus, and that's one single large vessel that comes off the top of the heart and possible ventricular septal defect. Symptoms include cyanosis, severe congestive heart failure, tachypnea, dyspnea, retractions, fatigue, poor feeding, poor growth, polycythemia, clubbing, widened pulse pressure, bounding pulses, increased pulse pressure, cardiomegaly, and frequent respiratory infections. Diagnosis is made by x-ray, ECG, and echo. Treatment for this one is surgical, including the Rastelli procedure, and also digoxin and diuretics. The next one is TGA, or transposition of the great arteries, and that's where the pulmonary artery and the aorta are switched. And you may also have an additional defect, such as a atrial septal defect or a ventricular septal defect, um, or a PDA, um, patent ductus arteriosus. So signs and symptoms include cyanosis, hypoxia, acidosis, congestive heart failure, tachypnea, retractions, poor feeding, and growth. And diagnosis is made by x-ray, ECG, echo, cath, and H&H. &H. And so for this one, the treatment, they also include, um, they also use the prostaglandins for this uh, just to keep the ductus arteriosus open or the other um, fetal heart uh, circulation defects open so that the baby can get oxygenation. Um, they can also do balloon atrial septostomy or, and an arterial switch. So the prostaglandin E is used because prostaglandins, um, if you've had OB, you may remember that prostaglandins relax 
muscle and the body uses prostaglandins to prevent the uterus from expelling a pregnancy. It's kind of something similar when it's used in a neonate. Um, it relaxes that muscle, keeps it, op keeps it open, and allows the body to get the oxygenation that they may not have been getting before. So those are mixed blood flow defects. The last one is decreased systemic blood flow. So this is decreased blood flow to the rest of the body. And signs and symptoms include cyanosis, hypercyanotic hyper episodes or tet spells, poor weight gain, and polycythemia. So the first one is coarctation of the aorta, and it's a narrowing or constriction of the descending aorta. Signs and symptoms include poor feeding, failure to thrive, increased respiratory effort, congestive heart failure, heart failure and shock when the PDA closes, renal failure, um, necrotizing enterocolitis, cyanosis and low BP in the legs, bounding pulse and high BP in the arms, and you will also hear a murmur and feel a thrill. So basically what happens when the PDA closes is that you are cutting off the blood flow or the oxygenation to the rest of the body so you'll see the body system start to fail one by one. Diagnosis for this one is made by x-ray, ECG, echo, cath, and they can also do a CT or MRI. So treatment because you need to keep the PDA open is to again use the prostaglandin E and they can do surgical resection and balloon dilation. So the next one is high HLHS, which is all, it's hypoplastic left heart syndrome, and it's a small left ventricle, and there's my, mitral and aortic valve involvement, and there's also a small aortic arch. So signs and symptoms of HLHS um, include progressive cyanosis, tachycardia, tachypnea, dyspnea, retractions, decreased peripheral pulses, congestive heart failure, and shock, and there is no murmur with this. Diagnosis is made by x-ray, ECG, and echo. It can also be picked up on fetal ultrasounds. Treatment for hypoplastic left heart uh, include giving the patient the prostaglandin E. You want to avoid oxygen. And surgical procedures are generally palliative, which include Norwood, Glenn, or Fontan procedures. You can do pulmonary artery banding, um, Restelli procedures, and the Blalig tacit shunt. But the only way to truly fix hypoplastic left heart is to do a transplant. So aortic stenosis is the next one and it's a narrow aortic valve and it may include left ventricular hypertrophy. Signs and symptoms are asymptomatic at birth and it's usually diagnosed with growth. Um, you can see a narrow pulse pressure which is also unique to this defect. Um, you also see chest pain and dyspnea with exercise and once the patient has that and it turns into fainting and dizziness, you know it's gotten serious. Unique to this one as well is a systolic murmur and it's a split S2. Diagnosis is made by x-ray, ECG, echo, or exercise test. Treatment for this one is prostaglandin E, oxygen, balloon valvuloplasty, or the Ross aortic valve procedure. So that is decreased systemic blood flow. So I hope this has helped you guys. I'm going to make this available to you down below just to help you and I hope that dividing it up like this kind of helps you organize your thoughts on the pediatric cardiac defects because I know they can be pretty daunting when you first look at them. So thanks for watching guys and if you have any questions make sure to leave them below and make sure you click like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.